The use of gold as a prize for its aesthetic value and as a means of monetary exchange goes hand in hand with the development of any civilization around the world. Societies which emerged independently of one another throughout history all seen the intrinsic value of gold, which was, in most cases, entirely subjective, meaning that gold itself has very little value besides what we ascribe it. Nevertheless, the simple fact that it enamored different civilizations around the world who never had contact with one another will perhaps be testament to its enduring value well beyond any post-collapse scenario. The purpose of this video is going to be to brainstorm the myriad ways that gold is going to be a part of collapse. It's not going to be talking about how gold is going to be entirely irrelevant because you can't eat it. Although there's some truth to that, that truth only holds to a point. The simple fact that gold has been a part of civilization for so long, a man seems to be intuitively enamored with its glitter, its rarity, and its unique properties. It's very likely that after a collapse scenario, this same cycle is going to repeat itself in that, yes, in the beginning stages of a collapse, when society is in shambles, when there is no marketplace, when there is no surplus commodities being circulated and generated, when people are basically just trying to stay alive, of course gold is not going to play a very big role at that point. But as soon as civilization makes a return, gold will most certainly be a factor. The real question is, is how long will that transitional phase last? The natural evolution of any economy is such that as soon as you have your core needs met, you have a surplus of whatever commodity you can produce. With that surplus, you would normally take it to barter. As a marketplace evolves, and more importantly, as rule of law emerges to protect those who do have gold, then and only then is gold going to be a commodity. Because the last thing you want to do in a crop hits the fan scenario is be the guy who is trying to barter with everybody for gold. And the reason why is because any leadership which emerges in that environment is going to have an expansionist imperialist mindset. They're going to want to expand. And as has been the case all throughout history, all conquerors have sought after the gold. From the Egyptian kings to the Mayans to the Spanish conquistadors to Germany in World War II. A significant motivation and fuel for their conquering was the pursuit of riches, the pursuit of gold, the pursuit of something which held value no matter what. So if you were either in a without rule of law situation or even a dystopian excessive rule of law situation in which there is no democratic judicial process, you run the risk of not only being robbed, but having your gold confiscated by whoever is in power at that time within that jurisdiction. Post-collapse warlords are going to be a nuisance when it comes to trying to trade with gold. Now, will gold retain its value? Will people just be throwing away gold in the streets and totally disregarding it? Absolutely not. And the reason why is, is quite simple. It's such a rare commodity. Only three full Olympic-sized swimming pools of gold have been mined throughout all of human history. So it's an incredibly rare substance. And the people who are holding gold right now, who have their wealth in gold, want to preserve that wealth. So no doubt, unless some asteroid hit the planet and showered us with millions of tons of gold, thereby creating excess supply and reducing the demand of the uniqueness, the rarity of gold, and it of course would still have value, it would just be on the level of silver. Now that said, as an investment, I think most people realize that gold is not something that you're going to invest in if you want to become rich. It's a good holder of value through very desperate times. The one advantage gold has over food is that it lasts forever. In fact, part of the reason why gold came in as a means of trading is because people's food would spoil if they weren't able to trade it. And maybe at the time they didn't need whatever it was that the other person was bartering. You know, you might have 
uh, hundred extra pounds of grain. You can either barter that for a bunch of fish or you could take a gold coin so that at a later time you could make that purchase. Something that held value was very useful in that regard in terms of building up actual wealth. Interestingly then, gold is what leads to giant wealth discrepancies and human enslavement because it allows you to store the value of human later that would otherwise diminish or degrade over time like the kings of old who used surplus grains as a means of gaining compliance from their subjects. Until gold was a factor, the extent of their power was limited. Once gold came around, the sky was essentially the limit. And once fractional reserve banking came around, never mind the sky, we're going way out into outer space in terms of the incredible wealth discrepancies that we are seeing in the industrial age. But food, on the other hand, if well preserved, has the potential to actually increase in price many times over before it spoils. So take, for instance, the case of freeze-dried food, which is guaranteed to last up to 30 years and realistically is probably going to be edible up until 40, even 50 years. So if you were to take a chicken today, Let's say a chicken today costs $10. You were to freeze dry that chicken, put it in a Mylar bag, store it. 20 years goes by, now it costs $50 for a chicken. 20 years from now, it is very likely the chicken is going to cost at least double, if not triple, uh, the cost as it is now. And that's not including inflation. So the average wage may only double over the next 20 years, but the cost of chicken may quadruple meaning that you've basically doubled your investment in 20 years. You can go and sell that chicken in 20 years. Now, I'm not saying you would necessarily do that, and a lot of people would be probably quite suspect to buy it, but certainly in the proper denominations, food is going to be an excellent barter tool in a crap-hits-the-fan scenario. Up until the point of civilization's re-emergence, that's when more advanced forms of barter start to present themselves, one which is likely using as a means of exchange precious metals. The predominant one is probably going to be silver. But the reason I make this discussion about gold, because it's a much more rare commodity than silver, and thus people are going to be seeking it more. So simply put, food is superior to gold when we're talking about mere survival. Once we get to the level of thriving, that's when the superiority of gold reign supreme if you are some post-apocalyptic warlord and you are trying to build an army you may well be able to build an army using conscripts who you provide basic provisions for in exchange for their services but if you want to find specialized mercenaries it's going to require gold like it always has so once again with specialization with civilization gold is what the seat of power is made out of what civilization is in many ways is a hierarchy system which emerges as a sorting of the natural surplus value of human labor so you can have humans who are indentured into labor you can have people who are put into slavery or you could have contracted free labor, which is exploitive in the sense that the person who is providing that person with a job is taking some of the surplus value of that person's labor and putting it into their own pocket, thus making them more and more wealthier. And the only proof for that wealth is to have some commodity which reflects that. The post-collapse warlords of the future are not just going to have warehouses of freeze-dried food that they're going to want to defend. They're going to want some commodity that they can then use to trade with warlords in other territories. Now, there are some obvious security risks in harboring gold that I've already talked about. Another one, of course, and I would advise anybody who is stacking precious metals on the internet, uh, you certainly don't want to advertise that you're doing that. It really isn't the same as the paranoid prepper who's worried that his house is going to be looted because he showed his food preps on YouTube. The reality is uh, the people who watch your videos are so far away from you that even if they knew where you lived and they disliked you and they had every intention of robbing you, it would be totally impractical 
for them to do so where obviously they're not going to have the fuel in their tank to make it to you in the first place to get those resources there's 7.5 billion people in the world i see a lot of preppers on youtube who have maybe a couple hundred views on their videos or a couple thousand views and they're actually worried that number one the person is going to be close enough to them that it's going to be worth their while to go and try to rob you post collapse and that also that's going to be their intent so uh, the odds of that those two things lining up are incredibly rare but in the case of somebody who is stacking a lot of precious metals something which is very small very portable and easy to break into a house and steal that may be something that a criminal would be willing to travel a great distance for and of course more motivated the more they knew you had i mean good luck hauling out a year's supply of mountain house food without the neighbors noticing but if you have a stockpile of precious metals in a safe or not then i'm assuming most people are going to want to keep on site because let's face it most preppers and rightly so they don't trust the banks and yeah if you own precious metals and they're not in your possession and you are a person who is prepping for economic collapse then for me that's just downright silly like if you just have a piece of paper that says you own a certain amount of gold and you don't have it in your possession and you consider yourself a prepper then something's wrong you better get that stuff in your possession uh, bury it do something with it because that's going to be absolutely vital now there are security risks to stockpiling food like i said in the early phases of collapse when all people want to do is eat they're going to care less about the gold and you're going to be an even bigger target if uh, people know that you're sitting on a bunch of food so there are pros and cons to both uh, my advice and my strategy has always been once i've dialed in every aspect of the self-sustaining lifestyle which i'm nowhere near close to doing then i will start to invest in precious metals because the fact is unless you're planning on getting into a leadership position and of course that may just happen whether you like it or not you may find yourself to be the most competent person after the smoke clears once you find yourself in the position of a leader you inevitably are going to contemplate expanding and once you do that gold is going to be a factor in that expansion so if you are content leading a lifestyle which is largely self-reliant and only relying on trades with your neighbors for essential life-sustaining commodities only then yeah gold is probably not going to be that big of a deal to you so if you do have all that dialed in and you still have money to spare go on a vacation enjoy life for a little bit if you still have money to spare after that invest your money in something which is actually going to generate revenue for you if you still have money after that to spare sure buy some precious metals store them away for a rainy day I don't know how much you should store I guess it really depends on how much money you got in your pocket now of course anything less than a full-blown collapse of civilization as we know it means that there probably is going to remain some measure of rule of law in place and thus precious metals or as they're so called because that's an entirely subjective assessment to call them precious they're rare they have some unique features but to call something precious is an entirely subjective thing but let's not go there in the majority of cases particularly economic collapse gold is definitely going to play a big role and it could actually benefit you to have some of that as opposed to food storage so if prepping for the big collapse of civilization as we know it scenario one in which even if you wanted to grow food you couldn't for whatever reasons then yeah stockpile food but when preparing for anything less than that indeed taking a look at precious metals is definitely a strategy worth considering let me know what you think in the comments section do you think that storing gold for shtf is a good thing or a bad thing and explain your reasons why thanks for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe canadian prepper out i should also add if you did want to purchase a freeze drying machine to preserve food long term i'll post a link to the harvest right freeze dryer in the description also if you're just interested in stockpiling smaller quantities of freeze-dried food we do sell it at canadianpreparedness.com
The best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com or BugOutRoll.ca. Premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.